Welcome to my smart side. Derivative for dummies. What is a derivative? Math. First of all, you need to know what tangent lines and secant lines are. They have something to do with curves of a graph. Just have a random arbitrary function here that's graphed here. So, so the, there's a curve here, and another one here, and then another curve from here. Okay, looking at this curve here, a secant line goes through two points in the curve. As you can see, this line is secant to this curve, because it goes through this point and this point. You can remember secant, like second. The first is one, second is two, so secant two, two points. And the tangent line, can you guess? Actually, tangent is just a single point. Uh, this is tough enough. I don't need to actually get a perfect tangent line. But anyway, you can imagine like with this curve here, there's like only one point here where this line and this curve intersect. Just one point. Because up here, you see the curve is curving away while the line is going straight this way. And then down here, the curve is curving this way and the line is going straight that way. Just one point. So, this is a tangent line. Intersects at one point. Now, what does this have anything to do with these things called derivatives. Well, a derivative, you take a function and the derivative of the function maps the slopes of the tangent lines. What, what does that mean? This is slope intercept form of a straight line. So we have y value, that's any point up and down, and we have this x is any point left and right. So for for a point x and y, so a point on a line, how far up or down, and how far left or right here that the point is, that's the x and y, and the m is for a slope. And it's how steep the line is. So higher M would be okay, like this. Steeper slopes. Higher M's, steeper slopes. We go higher. And then if M is zero, no steepness at all. It's perfectly flat, level. And if M is negative, it'll slope the other way. Then more negative values steeper in the negative direction. Uh, it makes sense because the steeper it is, well, um, the higher value you're multiplying by x. So the same x value for multiplying it higher, or yeah, higher value, it'll, it'll end up the y is a higher value. With, and then after you've multiplied this plus b as the y-intercept. It's how far up or down. The y-intercept is just where it is at the y-axis. So if x is 0, the y-axis, x is 0, left and right, then this would just be 0. Adding 0 does, doesn't do anything. So we have just this b, so that's the y-intercept. Anyway, mx plus b after multiplying it. Okay, let's talk about this M. This M slope. Slope is rise over run. Rise is like far up and then run big below. You run on the ground. The ground is below. And when you rise, you go up. That's how you can remember rise over run. The rise is a change in a Y value. So you take two points on the line. Take the Y value of one point 
of arc this is, and you subtract the y value of this, that's the vertical distance, if, if you can imagine, you know? So this y value, that's like from zero all the way up to here, so this distance, and you subtract this distance, you're left with just the distance between two points, that's rise, and run, as you could probably guess, x. You subtract x values, you know? And that's the slope. Because it, when you know the line is steeper, it'll be bigger vertical distance. But it's, it's a left and right distance, horizontal distance, it's not as much. So that's bigger, and then, but you're not dividing as big of a number. Less steep lines, it's bigger horizontally. So they have a smaller number, they're dividing a bigger number, so, you know, get it? Okay. Okay, so you can see here, there's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, what I just showed. But what is the y value, really? Y value, that's the result of running this function. So x, the input, that's also how much left or right part of the graph is, and then the output. So, for whatever x value I put in here, that whatever I get out of this expression, that I put it on the y value. So what a function is. Do you get it? So I could, since y is, y is the output of a function, so I could just put f of x So y2 is where the output of the function is, where when I put in x2, I'll get out y2, or f of x2, same thing, right? When I plug in x1, I get out y1, so I could say this is, why am I putting it to screen? You can't see where I'm putting it on the screen, I need to use the correct way. So getting out y2, or y1, okay I got it, you take x1 which is a particular x value, when I plug it into f of x, I get out y1, plug in x1 into the function, I get out y1, there you go, that's why I, it, this should be simple to understand, that's, okay, and then that's how I could replace the y's here with the f, do you get it? Okay, let's talk about the relationship between the two x's here. x1 is a particular point, x2 is a different point, horizontal position. And we could say that x2 is the same as x1, but we add a particular distance. Do you get it? The so, there's a distance, we can call it h, let's call it h, is the distance between the two x's. We could x1, leave it like it is, x2 is x1 plus that distance. Gets you to x2, do you get it? Yes, okay, maybe, okay. So, instead, so, we're going to replace x2 with x1 plus h and this x2 is this, we'll replace it with x1 plus h. Hang on, look at this, we have x1, add h, and then we subtract x1, these will cancel, we have x1 with in, in here, and you're subtracting x1, same value, so you're left with just h at the bottom, the denominator. Oh, look at that. Now, we only have one x reference here, x1, so we'll just get rid of the x1, or no, no, it's underscore 1. We have just x. Look at that! Back to our secant line, remember? Two points. For any positive h, remember, h is the distance between the two x's. Uh, so... That's any 
any two four, ah, wait a minute. Okay, there we go. So, eight. Horizontal distance between here and here. Horizontal distance. Like, if you're here, how far to the right to go here, that's H. This is the secant line. So, any positive H. So, if we make H bigger, then the secant line will have points that are farther away horizontally. Greater horizontal distance for greater H. Now, mapping the slopes of the tangent lines, now we just need to make H zero. Because if the distance is zero, well, it's the same point. But hang on, we have this divide by H. You know you cannot divide by zero. There's a thing in calculus called a limit. So, if you cannot calculate an exact value, because like division by zero, for example, you need to take the limit. The limit is, okay, so you can't find the exact value, but as you get closer to wherever x is going to, what value are you going towards? So, as we could see, this is, you know, this is the slope of the secant line, but as, wait, no, sorry, I made a mistake, h goes to zero, as the distance goes towards zero, so as you can imagine, the horizontal distance is going towards zero, the two points here getting closer together, as they go towards the, li the line being from a secant to tangent, remember secant, two points, tangent would be one point. The, the slope value goes towards a particular value, and that value is the derivative at, at that point. Here's one way of writing a uh, derivative, d over dx. Well, technically this means derivative with respect to x. So I guess with respect to, I guess that's, uh... Okay, so h, the distance between whatever we're doing respect to... I don't know a lot about that. Anyway, so you have an expression in here, anything, like x squared. Another way of representing a derivative is use this. This is called a prime symbol. That's used for a derivative. So, if you define an original function, f of x, you can use f prime of x to represent the derivative. So, the derivative is the slope of the tangent lines. Now, where the graph is steeper, so red is the original graph. I'll just show that. As you can see here, it's a whole lot steeper than, like, here. And this is steeper than here and here. This minimum here, you can see the tangent line would have to be zero, right? Because this part of the graph goes up and this goes up, so the tangent line has to be flat. And here, it's negative, so you can imagine the tangent line would have to be negative or decreasing, right? Now, if we look at the derivative, as you can see here, black is the derivative, red is the original. As you can see, the red, as red gets steeper here, the black goes higher. And then down here, as you can see, it's getting less steep. Red is less steep here, and black is lower. And then here, you can see the tangent line on the red would have to be zero, or, or flat, like I just said. The derivative is zero, representing, you know, like flat here. And then, as you can see, red here, you can see it's going to be negative slope for the tangent line, the derivative is negative. And you can see red starts to get flat again, and then positive, and the black derivative does the same thing, goes negative, goes to zero here, and positive. Does that make sense? If you are smart, click the... No. I'm... Okay, if you learned something, click the like button. If you want to learn more things, click the subscribe button. Learn more from me next time.